Well, you know, his, historically, mirrors have been used uh, time and time again. Going back to uh, the Dutch in, in the, I guess it was the 17th century, there was this artist that painted these two dukes or something, and he has this image that's on the floor. It's just this sort of stretched out ex uh, abstraction. And it was basically caused by a mirror. And if you photograph it just right, like from an angle, really obtusely, it turns into a perfectly normal skull. This is part of my notion about, you know, everybody's perception is totally individual. So if you and I were standing right next to each other and we were observing a rainbow out on the horizon, because your horizon is different than my horizon because you're two or three inches taller, we would not see the rainbow. As a matter of fact, all rainbows that I see are my personal rainbows. Nobody else can see my rainbows. So that's what happens with mirrors, you know, because of the angle and the reflection. When I look in these mirrors, we, you and I can be standing right next to each other and we will see different reflections. That's one of the reasons that I, I, sort, of, I sort of enjoy I sort of enjoy mirrors. Now, I, I bought all of these mirrors because I had this other piece that I wanted to, to, that I wanted to make. And I, I, I imagined that, and then I made a small model, and the model seemed to do what I thought it would do. And so I built a big one, and it was the room across the hall there. And there were, there were uh, um, vertical mirrors that were eight feet tall, that made two walls that were perpendicular to each other. And to compensate for the space, like there was the center of this thing where you would stand in the middle of this circle that I put on the floor, the mirrors had to be, each one had to be progressively smaller because the width of things, the further away from you they are, the wider they get. In order to look equal, uh, they had to be like that. Then there were these angle pieces that all came straight out from those wall pieces that again were like this. So they all came into the circle. Now the reason I did that is that two things happen. You stand in the middle of the circle and you look at the mirrors. And first, you see your reflection in these mirrors that are standing up, just like you were looking into a mirror. Then all of a sudden, your eyes, well, this doesn't happen for everybody. Some people can't do this. But all of a sudden, your eyes, the depth of feel of your eyes reaches beyond the surface of the mirrors. And all of a sudden you see the space that you're standing in and you see yourself standing in a space that doesn't exist. And this happens on both, on both of these the walls that are like that. And so this, it, it, it's, again, that's, it's that whole, you know, idiosyncrasy about nobody, nobody ever sees the same world because our brain produces it, you know, each one individually. They, they have this system in the brain that sorts out information um, and that information pr produces an image and everybody's image is absolutely their own. They're all idiosyncratic to each person, just like everybody's rainbow is his own. So yeah, of course we all see the world, you know, that we produce individually, and nobody sees the same. I'm sure you've had conversations where you're talking to somebody who, you can't agree on what color you're looking at. My wife do it, and I do this all the time. She said, no, 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 that's gray. I said, no, it's not gray, it's blue. No, it's gray, it's blue. We just see different, obviously you see different colors. You know, me and a scientist, we are on the same page, but I can't convince them to pay any attention <laughs> because nobody, everybody knows artists don't know anything. It's just the way the world is. So there you go. That's mirrors.